Okay, the final result that I want to show you today is that no matter what Turing machine that you have, it can always be converted into an equivalent Turing machine that is planar. So the difference here compared to the other two results was that those two needed the non-determinism in order for them to work. Whereas this one is deterministic Turing machines all throughout. And of course, a non-deterministic Turing machine would also can be made planar too. But I'm claiming that this is true for a deterministic machine. And for some reason, I can't find this anywhere on the internet. The only reference that I have is a stack exchange question that I asked because after I observed this, there's actually something kind of interesting here. So I might as well make a whole video about this. Why is this true? So what we need to do, or a recipe that we can do, is that if we have any two edge crossings in a Turing machine, we can convert it into an equivalent Turing machine that doesn't have any edge crossings. And the idea is, is that for every pair of edge crossings, we're gonna add a state at the crossing, and actually other states too, and that will eliminate the edge crossing. And since there's only a finite number of edge crossings, therefore we can just repeatedly do this over and over until we have exhausted all the edge crossings and then we're good to go. So let's look at any pair of possible edge crossings. So there's one transition and it doesn't matter whether they go to the right or to the left, but they cross. Okay, so we got something like this and let's say that the going right transition here is gonna look like read an A, change it to a B, and move in some direction D. I don't know whether that's left or right, it doesn't matter. And this other one, let's call it read a C, change it to a D, and move in direction E. So these transitions can be exactly the same, they can be totally different, I have no idea. But what we're gonna do is change the Turing machine a little bit so that we can make this crossing not appear here. So how do we actually fix this? So I'm gonna redraw this picture over here. So here are our four states. And what we wanna do is if we're in this state taking this transition, we wanna end up here such that the state of the entire tape, the state and everything is exactly the same over here as it is here. So over here, we're gonna be doing some more stuff than is over here. But once, if we're here and we end up here, take or taking that transition originally, then I want the status of the machine to be exactly the same here as here, as if nothing happened, but things did happen. So how do we do this? Well, this direction on either transition does not matter. It will not matter because Turing machines allow you to always move right. Well, depending on how you see it in the camera, move right, one of these two is right. So you can always move right in a Turing machine. And so therefore, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move right and then come back. And we're gonna have a state in the middle that's gonna mediate the intersection here but we can't just glue these transitions together like this. Because if we do something like this, then, and we weren't thinking very carefully, then it might be possible that we are here and we go up this transition and are now allowed to go left because the thing that we're reading based off the transition allowed us to do that. So we don't want that to happen. And actually if we do this, it will not work for sure because whatever this direction is, whether it's left or right, that means that, let's just say it's left, then over here, we ended up moving left. Well here, if we're here and we end up over here, that means we took two transitions, which means either we took two lefts, two rights, or a left and a right, or right left. And in all of those cases, that is not equivalent to a single left or a single right. So no matter what, we need to have an odd number of transitions if we're going up this way or this way. So how are we going to fix that? It's going to be putting another state in the middle of the beginning transition here. We're gonna put a state in the middle of the, these two original transitions. And so we're currently at an odd number, but of course it matters what we actually put on the transition. Here's how we're going to fix this. Right here, we're supposed to read an A and change it to a B and of course move that direction D. Well then, 
That means once we get to here, we need to have changed that cell, whatever it is, to a B and then moved whichever direction it is. So whatever happens up here, we need to change whatever cell that we're looking at to a B, no matter what. So we gotta change that thing to a B and then move in that corresponding direction D. And similarly, we gotta change the cell contents to a lowercase d and move in direction capital E. So whatever happens, we change it to lowercase d, move in direction E. The problem is when we get to this state, then we could be looking at anything. And so if we're not careful, we could go the wrong way. So the key is that we introduce two new tape symbols, one corresponding to this way, one corresponding to that way. And so what I'm gonna call them is a dollar sign for going this way and the euro for going the, the up and left direction. What we're gonna do up here is that we're supposed to, in this state, be reading an A and originally changing it to a B. So instead now, I'm going to read an A and change it to a dollar sign and always move right. Because we're always allowed to move right, we not always can move left, so we always move right. So over here, correspondingly, I'm going to change this uh, cell C into the euro and move in the right direction. So think about the tape for a second. In either one of these, we're reading an A or a C, and then we're changing them, that cell, into a dollar sign or a euro, and then we're moving right. So we move right, and then we want to move left. So if we move left, now, whatever that cell is, it must be a dollar sign or a euro. And since we said, okay, that's a dollar sign or a euro, there's no way to go the wrong direction because this one marked it with a dollar sign, this one marked with a, with a euro. So what do we put on these transitions right here? Well, we could be reading anything once we move right one cell because there could in principle be anything there. Whatever X content we see there, whether it's an original tape symbol or whatever, we will always move left and not change it. So we add a transition, whatever we see, you go left for all X in the tape alphabet. And similarly over here too. So this one's also an X move left for every tape symbol X. So how do we deal with these transitions in terms of what they read? It's whatever we wrote there originally. So this one was a dollar sign. So this one will be dollar sign to keep it going the same direction. And of course this one will be euro. And we have eliminated that edge crossing. And since there are only a finite number of edge crossings, therefore, no matter what Turing machine you got, you can always make it planar. Isn't that pretty cool? And you can analyze this a little bit to see that the number of times you do this is actually not that bad. And it comes from intuitive experience if you've dealt with Turing machines a lot. Turing machines generally are not very complicated in terms of edge crossings. They're generally keep moving left and then move right, then move left. It's just a straight line of transitions. And it's not like states are gonna be interconnected very much. And so this kind of confirms that is true, but it's very nice to be able to prove this as well.